Eureka! The story so far. There are only two basic machines, the inclined plane and the lever. All other machines are variations of these. A screw is simply a twisted inclined plane. A wheel is simply a circular lever whose fulcrum has become an axle. And now, the pulley. The pail of water that Jack and Jill had to fetch was not on top of the hill at all. It was actually at the bottom of a well. Unfortunately, it was too heavy for either of them to pull up. What they needed was a simple machine to give them a mechanical advantage. No, the inclined plane doesn't help. Nor does the lever. Nor the screw. What other sorts of machine are there? Ah, yes, the wheel. But what's Jill doing with it? She is arranging the wheel so that it will revolve on an axle stuck in that post. Very good. Jill's just rediscovered another sort of simple machine. A wheel that instead of being all of a piece with its axle, can revolve freely around an axle. Since this type of wheel is used mainly for pulling things, it's called a pulley. And Jill can hitch the rope around it and use it to pull. No, Jack can use it to try to pull the pail of water up. That's funny. He needs just as much force to try to pull the pail of water up this way as he did trying to pull it up the other way. Hmm, I wonder if there's a better way of rigging the pulley. Amazing. How did Jill manage it? Both she and Jack only had one pulley to work with, and yet Jill was able to pull up the pail with half the force that Jack needed. Well, when a pulley is set up like this, it's called a single fixed pulley. All it does is change the direction of your pull, but it doesn't reduce the force you need. But when a pulley is arranged like this, it's called a single movable pulley, and it has the force you must exert, because the pail of water is now, in effect, being lifted by two ropes instead of one. It's as if two people were lifting the pail. And it looks as if we're getting something for nothing again, doesn't it? But of course we're not. If we compare the distance that Jill raised the pail with the amount of rope she pulled, we see that it's the same old story. What she's gaining on the force, she's losing on the distance. The distance that she pulls the rope is twice the distance that she raises the pail. But the way Jill used the pulley is still twice as effective as the way Jack used it. There are lots of other ways of combining pulleys, and it's simple to figure out the mechanical advantage of each system. All you do is count the number of ropes supporting the weight. This single fixed pulley has one piece of rope supporting a weight of 600 newtons. Input force, 600 newtons. Output force, 600 newtons. And the mechanical advantage is therefore one. There isn't any mechanical advantage, in other words. This single movable pulley has two ropes supporting the weight. Input force, 300 newtons. Output force, 600 newtons. Mechanical advantage, two. Here's a system with three supporting ropes. Input force, 200 newtons. Output force, 600 newtons. Mechanical advantage, three. This one also has a mechanical advantage of three. And is, in fact, the pulley system that Jill finally rigged up for herself. Although she had to pull the rope three meters for every meter that she raised the pail of water, she only needed 200 newtons of force to do it. In a sense, she'd become three times as strong as Jack. And now you know why Jack fell down and broke his crown. Thank <laughs> you.